Hello and welcome back to the final third. Uh, today's discussion, or topic I should say, is our predictions for the bottom half of the Premier League. Our individual predictions, by the way. So, to kick us off, uh, Steph, who have you gone for then? Right, uh, as you can see guys, on the screen at the moment, you're looking at my bottom ten. Okay. So, uh, starting off uh, from 20th then, right at rock bottom for my prediction, I've got West Brom. Okay? Okay. Um, having a look at their strikers of Charlie Austin, Hal robson Canu, and Kenneth Zahore. Yeah. For me. Doesn't scream goals, goals, does That doesn't, doesn't scream, scream goals, goals, to be fair. That, at best, would have been a good lineup 10 years ago in the Prem for me. Yeah. Okay, so for me, I cannot see many goals here in West Brom. And, you know, West Brom are the up and down club. Yeah. Yeah, they can yeah. do really well. Yes, they did really well in the Championship It's a different last league, year, though, completely. But they are always a team that struggles. Have they ever stayed up? I've, they've I've, been quite a yo-yo club. They've had, yeah. their, they've had their seasons where they stayed up, like, very last minute into the season. Um. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think they haven't got really much of a strong strike for us going into this going into the opening games and might be able to in, they might be able to improve that. They might start on. off all right, but maybe But um but looking not. at looking at your bottom ten, I think uh Yeah, so sorry I've, guys, yeah. So I've got Fulham then in nineteenth. Okay. Um, and again I don't see them doing that well. But then here's maybe my first controversial one, and I've thought this for years, as you can see. I've got Crystal Palace down as 18th. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, talking of Palace, now the main question for me has to be can they keep on to Zaha? He's their main guy, isn't he? He's their main guy. Um, I'm sure I've read somewhere that we've tweeted um, earlier on this week, and you can let me know for this, is Dortmund, am I right in saying there was talk this week that Dortmund were looking for Zaha as a possible then replacement if oh I don't United say Sam Shaw no, I don't think that's so, going to be a possible move yeah. for United but so Zaha, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he's been a wanted yeah. man he was, lo- he was looked at Arsenal last year he's a, he's a player that is a key contributor to that team a lot of goals a lot of assists for that team if they lost him I think that would be that would, I would put them in a worse position than even 18th but start off I think a big surprise me not a, a surprise for me there is um where Leeds are in Newcastle. Yeah. So do you want to go? Do you want to talk to us about Leeds? Because obviously they're a newly promoted yeah. club. You've got the two other newly promoted in nineteenth and twentieth, and then you've got Leeds in there at fifteenth. So what? Yeah. What's, what's, made you, so, what's made you go there? Right. Okay. So having a look at this now. So I've got Villa in seventeenth, and again that's where they finished this year, wasn't it? I think they were just about staying up. But then answering your question there about Leeds, Bryn, I think they've spent. They are the club that they've spent the most. Okay. Yeah, and bit, surely yeah. having Bielsa at the helm of the team is going to make them a stronger team. I think that good coaching this year is going to be absolutely crucial. Because yeah. you've got to think about it now, guys. You're not going to probably have that many of your supporters maybe getting those extra points as well. Most of the season, surely at the moment, is going to be played behind closed doors. Okay, so that's, yeah. why, I've gone, yeah. that's why I've gone a bit controversial and I'm going to keep it as Sheffield, I think, are going to finish in 13th. They had an incredible season last year. Very good. But my yeah, main true. worry with Sheffield this year is second season drop-off. Yeah, second season syndrome. Yeah. Um, Luckily for them, they didn't qualify for the for Europe in some way because I think that could have been a big distraction. Yeah. Um, you look how badly Burnley did a few seasons ago. Talking about Burnley, you've got them up at an 11th position. Uh, for me... We'll come. We'll come to mind short, shortly. But for me, that's a bit of a shock. Do you want? Do you want to kind of go through go through your thoughts on Burnley the, the, in eleven? This is where now I had real problems. Okay? okay. If you if you look if you saw all my workings out and my corrections, yeah, so I, there's I, a few I was, things going on. There's a few there. things, guys, that you can see that I've handwritten. And for me, I was a bit torn having a look at the Burnley squad again. As I said, I like good coaching, and yes, Sheffield had an incredible season last year. But I think Burnley had some really good momentum and nearly overachieved this year. If I'm having a look at their squad, it's not on paper the best squad. Um, I'd worry maybe that they're ageing. If you're looking at the average age of most of their players, we're talking late 20s for the majority of the players. 
Yeah. You know, we're talking about Chris Wood, one of their main strikers, is 28. Ashley Barnes is 30. Jay Rodriguez is 31. Okay, but for me, an absolutely crucial season this year has got to be Dwight McNeil. Okay. okay. Good up and coming player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a 20, 20 year old English winger, good left footed. And there was talk at one point that United were in, uh, in for him. Okay? Really? I don't know if he's good enough. Another player United yeah. are in for. No, yeah. surprise, surprise. surprise. Yeah, surprise. I know. But he then stands out for me as one of their, their up and coming players. Burnley really, really need to keep on to players like him. And obviously, then Sean Dyche needs to have an incredible season again. So that's and then just, where... qu- just quickly there, you've got Everton in 10th. What's your thoughts on that? Um, they had a really good season, Everton, last year. Um, when they, when Ancelotti took over, I thought that they had a really good time. There was talk this week about Hammers possibly being... Uh, I saw... we, we the biggest, uh, yeah, Hammers yeah, we were... and Allen, so apparently. So they could be a team that I might have to change my mind depending on what happens by the end of the transfer window. OK. Um, again, we're talking about good coaching. For me now, you'll see my top ten in the next video. Um, but for me now, Everton are having a great season. They've got a lot of players that really need to prove themselves, Everton, this year. If I'm thinking about Richarlson, he's had some really good seasons before he signed for them. Yeah. But maybe I don't think he's quite established himself and has hit the ground as, as effective as we were hoping for initially. Moise Keane, is he going to stay at Everton? Don't know, there's, there's rumours. Rumours are he's going to go back to Juve, yeah. Well, if he... If he does what? stay, he's got to be scoring more goals. Didn't yeah. score enough last year. Calvert-Lewin, no. can they rely on him and Richarlison? Good. He's a good youngster, Calvert-Lewin. He's 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 done okay considering he's he's, he's one. He's got a few goals actually. To he's going to be on the fringe of the England squad as well. He's got he's got to be there or thereabouts for that as mm. well internationally. I think good player to have potentially, possibly. Everton are a really likable team. I yeah. really like the, their team looking at it. Ancelotti is, yeah, he's good. And I think, manager, and I yeah. think that b- when we get by the end of the transfer window, I have a feeling that Everton will have strengthened a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know quite who Hammers, by the sounds of it, is a very strong possibility. Looking yeah. at Alan from from Napoli. Yeah, but, yeah. massive, so on that one, okay, um, use. So uh, that was Steph's s- s- bottom half. So okay. what about your This what about is your currently mine. Uh, as you can see on screen now, the bottom four is exactly the oh, same wow. as Steph's. Um, and also, um, I've got Wolves in 10th as well. Because yeah, that's, re- my, that's the one I, I just... I know, I thought that might nice catch your eye because I thought <sighs> Wolves, uh, obviously last season were... Class, let's be fair. Yeah, um, again, overachieved, really. But I'm not sure with the players, if clubs sign certain players, will they be looking at Jimenez? Well, will cur- they be looking at Adam Traore? Currently, uh, at this time, just before the week before the league starts, kicks off, Wolves are the only team not to have signed a player. Right. And I think that's going to play a part, to be honest, uh, this season. I think one of the main things Wolves have to be worried about is their defence. I think going forward, they've got a lot of good midfielders. They've got a, enough a good core. They've got yeah, a they've good core. Obviously, Neves, Moutinho. But, but my worry now, again, moving on another season, we're, we're relying on Roman Sice and Willy Borley in the Wolves' defence. Yeah. You know, they're not the quickest guys around. They're they've, not. They've also the most lost exciting. Doherty they, to, to Spurs. Yes, again, yeah. yeah. The right so back. So, who was their right back replacement? Do we know? But uh, there's been there's been, obviously there's, there's there's rumors there's rumors for all clubs but there's no one that looks. I haven't like heard anything been, been about confi- Wolves. There's I've been confirmed. Nothing. They've lost Morgan Gibbs White. He's on loan at Swansea. Good. Yeah. I think that's a good move in. But obviously they they've lost him in strength and depth. Um, you you look at some of their obviously they've got kind of Cody just been called up to the international squad. Which is very deserves. very good, very good player, very good centre back, commanding captain for the team as well. Good player there, but okay, ten. I can see what you're thinking. They're gonna, they could have a yo-yo season. They might be yeah. there, thereabouts. Yeah. Also, it's, it, it's very similar-ish to Steph. Yeah. Because obviously, I've got Sheffield who are who are down there as well. Yeah. Second season so, syndrome. Okay. Same thing. Right. It was, tell me about uh, Brighton. You've got Brighton in fifteenth. I had them in sixteenth. Pretty similar. Pretty similar. There. Why is that? I think they they're quite a good Premier League team. Um. Not, I can't tell you how much signings they've done. I can't tell you who they've actually bought in. But I feel they'll they'll be safe. I reckon they'll be safe. 
I, th I think for them the big the biggest sign in and probably one of the best free transfers this over the summer was Adam Lallana. Of course, Lallana, yes. Um, le leaving that. Liverpool, first yeah. team football. I think he was very good at Southampton. Now first team football. As long as he can stay away from his injuries, it blighted him slightly with his Liverpool career. He could have a very good season. Obviously, you've got the big centre back Ben White. Yeah, I think he's just he, returned from just, Leeds. Re just returned from Leeds and rumoured to have had. Big offers by Leeds and even Arsenal are rumoured to have been interested. Yeah. But you're right there. I get Potter had an incredible season. Surely yeah. for me, yeah. I, I've got to admit now that Potter, pound for pound, and I'm going to say something controversial here, I think in the next couple Surprise of years one. could be one of the top pound for pound managers, whether he gets the funding and whether he's supported by that. You know, okay. we, at, at the moment, you know, we, we can't imagine Brighton are ever going to be big spenders here. No. I think if he was to ever get, for example, like a Spurs job, I think that would really suit Could he become him. one of those Swansea rejects who becomes like a, in a very yeah. good club? Because, you know, Rodgers, yeah. Martinez. Martinez. They've, they've all done, they've they've all done, done very well, to be They've fair. all done a decent job, haven't yeah. they? They've all come from in that, that mould. Um, but they, they, but the, the, my, my worry about Brighton this year is, again, where's the goals coming from? Mount Mount Bay last year only scored. Mount Bay was the top scorer last year. He did have a good then. season, though. To but, be fair, but, but behind well. him, behind him, then though, you're looking at Trossard with five goals. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great, but I still think they'll be safe. I think with Lallana, I mean, I think if you a bit look, more uh, creative. They're just a good coach. Yeah, if you not... look at the the those bottom three, bottom four, I don't think they've got such a good squad to be honest. I think they're struggling with. Right. So let's move Brin. on to uh, Brins. So this is Brins, uh, bottom. Um, so as you'll see, see um, bottom three okay. are the same. Wow, well, exactly the same. Um, yeah, exactly so I think, I think same. we're all feeling the very, very, yeah. very similar situation. And all three, but, oh, all wow. three haven't got a, a strong squad. But obviously Brin. we've been seeing a bit of a surprise there. That, that is, yeah. That's the big surprise. I think, I think for Burnley. me, okay, looking at Burnley seventeenth, okay, um, I don't think they're a decent team anymore. I think they've got an aging squad. I think if you look at some of their players, in Chris Wood, okay. He's a good striker, but who else have they got? They, we've spoken about McNeil, but he's only one player. I think um, so, solid, solid left mid. Obviously, rumoured to have gone to a few clubs. Big future ahead of him, but I don't feel he's going to be the be-all and end-all for that team. Yeah. So I think they'll struggle. Right, one thing I'd like to draw your attention to. Bryn, you've said West Ham was going to be 13. I've said West Ham are going to be 12. And I've said West Ham going to be 14. So we're so, all pretty much... the. Round about there. Okay, what makes West Ham such, in our eyes, then such solid lower middle end table team? I think I think realistically, my thoughts were that um, obviously they've got Haller, who's um, obviously big, big, big signing for them last season. Um, didn't do much though, he no. didn't do much last season, but and I know it's only pre season. Yeah. And I know it can it doesn't always talk about anything because we've seen a few players that have always had a good pre season and then not had a very good full season, but. Looking at his game so far, he's got a few goals. He's had a good connection with the players around him. You've got Philippe Anderson there, who's a very good, mm. very good midfielder striker. And then obviously you've also got you've also got Bowen as well, who they signed from Hull in the, in January. He's very he, good. He's good, quick. Um, and we, Declan Rice as well. Yeah. If they can keep hold of him, I think yeah. I think thirteenth is a reasonable position. Declan had a, a very good for for twenty one as well. You know he's going to I be a year older. Yeah, age as well. I, he's somebody that you honestly feel that is in the late twenties. He's, he's been there a while, hasn't he? Yeah. Feels like he has been there around. Um, and, he, and, he, and he does, a, and he helps him out defensively as well, because you know. I think if you looked uh, after the restart, uh, Antonio was unreal. Oh, yeah, those yeah. four. Do you remember those four goals against Norwich? Oh. Outstanding. I think. Yeah. If he can have a good season, anyway, well, he, 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 he finished the season with ten goals, which isn't bad. No, um, but most of them a, came after, yeah, the after lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the worry again with West Ham has got to be defensively. We've spoken that Declan can help them, but then one of their main centre backs is Issa Diop. Uh, you know, and how much can you rely on him? I, he's a young mm -hmm. French centre back. He's pressure. got a lot good, of pros. Yeah. He's a good prospect. Good prospect. Good player. Um, solid. And I'm sure lots of teams would like him as their sort of backup centre back. But when you're West Ham relying on somebody like him, yeah. that's a lot of pressure on the young man's uh, shoulders. Also, we're talking about Newcastle as well. So you've got them as fifteenth, Brent. I've got them as sixteenth. And Steph, where did you have Newcastle? Uh, Newcastle finish? for me, as you can see, boys are on fourteen. So slightly me. higher than me and Bryn. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know about Newcastle. They're one of those teams that, you know, they never spend money, to be honest. And they're always relying on one or two players, one or two players mm. being basically a maximum. They've, they've, been able to, they've been able to keep long stuff. They've got Joe Linton, who was a big signer last season. Massive signer. Um, similar, like to West, similar to West Ham now. They've had a big sign in the summer before. Can he then take like last season's woes and turn it into a bit of a into a yeah. bit of a joy? For me, guys, Newcastle this maximum. year. It's same maximum, yeah. Easy. It it's yeah. it basically depends for me what sort of season he has. Um, it was really nice towards the end of last season that Almiron started to grow into that role a little bit more. He seemed to get a bit more confident. I'm he? sure. I think he, he nearly played for them. It was about like a year, I think, from his debut that he actually then finally before became he scored. involved. Yeah, he scored. He scored. Him a while to score. He scored a while. Um, yeah. I'd like to think that now he's got the taste for it of scoring and getting used to the English league. I think he's somebody who could still have a good season. Don't forget, guys, about John Joe. Yeah. Don't forget okay, about John be, Joe. Yeah, he's, he, he's somebody that always gets involved in every mm. match, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. I think so. Looking at those, we've we've seen the bottom halves of all three of our our predictions. Similar, teams, very similar. Team, teams that we we all think are going to fit in similar positions. We'll all see. We'll look, we'll look back at this in May and see if we're anywhere um, near it. Anywhere yeah. near it. All of us have. Um, all of us predict that Sheffield are going to finish in the bottom half. Yeah. So they definitely that second so, the second season second syndrome. season syndrome okay and all of us have predicted that Leeds are gonna stay up yeah. and they are gonna have what looks like a good season okay so, okay uh, there we are guys so if you enjoyed uh, the episode make sure you give it a like and a subscribe uh, and stay tuned for our top half of the Premier League see you next time.